It was a bitter cold Quebec City night when staying home meant staying safe. Across town, there's light coming from inside the mosque at the Islamic Cultural Center of Quebec. Uh, on Sunday night uh, and every night, almost every night, we pray the evening prayer, the last prayer of the day in, uh, in the mosque. It's 7.30 p.m. Some 65 worshipers, including women and three children, are beginning their Sunday prayers. At the same time, a 27-year-old man is heading towards the mosque. In his car are guns and ammunition. The night is getting colder and darker as the man pulls up to the mosque. He isn't there to pray. Well, the prayer takes about like 10 minutes, so we, we finish the prayer at around 7.40, 7.45. An unholy terror is about to be unleashed. And I heard a lot of noise. Suddenly, tuck, 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 tuck. The man walks into the mosque, his weapons fully loaded. He's there to kill. I live beside the mosque, so when I was looking back, I found that the police cars are standing over there, so I, I got worried. I was thinking it was fire in, in the mosque, something happening in the mosque. Au début, on n'a rien compris. On s'est dit peut-être c'est des feux d'artifice. Au bout de quelques secondes, il y avait une personne qui descendait. Il était en train de crier, on tire sur nous, il y a des, il y a des blessés. C'était la panique totale. La panique totale. Chacun il est parti à droite, il est parti à gauche. Lorsqu'il est entré, il a commencé les, les battes, personne, il tue tous. Il y en a ceux qui l'ont donné la balle, ça, ils sont morts sur place, il y en a qui ont été blessés. Donc les, tout ce qui est resté en arrière, ils, ils ont été massacrés vraiment. Hafid is one of ten men piled in this alcove. He watches as the man beside him dies. By 8 p.m., police surround the mosque and El Rafai records the chaos. I found the ambulance and the police cars and the, the whole crime has been committed. I start uh, shooting live on, on, on Facebook. We didn't know at that point what, what's going on mm -hmm. uh, until we found the stretchers coming out of the main entrance of the mosque with people wounded, uh, injured and people maybe dead, I don't know. We start actually recognize our, our friends. So I, I start calling him. I started shouting at him. Uh, just to support it, and he looked at me on the stretcher. Until he got in. Who was that? This was my friend Nizar. Police cordon off the area, but the shooter is long gone. It fled in the car he'd arrived in just minutes before. At 8.10, a man calls 911 and asks to speak to investigators. He tells police he's the suspect they're looking for and patiently waits to be arrested. This is the man who surrenders to police. He's charged with six counts of murder and five counts of attempted murder. He's Alexandre Bissonnette, 27 years old, a political science student at nearby Laval University. And bit by bit, a profile of an accused mass murderer begins to emerge. As a child, he was an army cadet, which would open his world to weapons. 
though people who knew him in high school remember an introvert with a passion for chess. I cannot visualize one single personal friend that this kid had. No, not one. So uh, he, he was a truly loner, uh, the definition of lonely in, in, at that period of his time, at least, that's for sure. He was bullied a lot. Like, if I would have to make like a top 10 of the people that were bullied at school, he would be number one. And that's not exaggerating. Like, the whole school bullied him, almost. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, I'd like uh, to start by saying that uh, uh, around 350 million people uh, have no access to water in the world. Just two years ago, Bissonnette seemed like a pretty typical college kid, socially conscious and busy at building his online presence. By the time he got to university, his interests turned to politics, and his politics were taking a hard right turn, according to people he met in a political discussion group. Je pense qu'il n'éprouvait aucun intérêt pour les sujets que nous abordions. Euh, lui avait d'autres intérêts, on peut le voir euh, pour Trump ou encore pour euh, Marine Le Pen, ce qui, dans notre groupe, n'était pas des questions d'actualité. De Boise says Bissonnette left the group, his opinions too radical for his fellow students. By last year, his worldview got even darker. He was known as an online troll, denigrating feminists, refugees and Muslims. He was a gathering storm. It was one of my friends that told me, that called me, and he said, you won't believe who is responsible for the shooting. And then he told me, Alexandre Bissonnette. Uh, I did not believe it at first. I thought that he was joking. You know, like a kind of joke that you remember the guy that was like bullied at school. Well, he is the guy responsible for that. And when he told me that, I was in total disbelief. Could it be a student remembered by many as a chess nerd had grown into a cold-blooded killer? When I looked at his face, he's like a baby face. So when I, when I thought about that, why would you do that? Would, when, you, when you listen to the witnesses, he was very confident, he was very stable while shooting people. Est-ce qu'il a dit quelque chose? Non, il n'a rien parlé. Non, c'était quelqu'un qui est sûr de lui. Il l'a déchargé sur nous. Et vous avez vu le petit couloir où on mettait nos chaussures. Il, il se retirait en arrière. Je ne sais pas ce qu'il fait. Il charge encore. Il revient. On entendait les feux et une série de, de coups de feu, genre une dizaine, même plus. Il Il achevait toutes les blessées. Et nous, il nous ciblait de, de, de là-bas. Là. Beaucoup de, beaucoup de, de balles. Et c'était quelqu'un calme, il ne parle pas. Il shoote, il shoote, il shoote. Lorsqu'il ça termine, il ne laisse pas une seule. Tu vois, c'est vraiment, il a l'intention il a de tuer vraiment le maximum. Là. This picture, taken inside the mosque as paramedics try to revive a victim, also shows two spent clips from what's believed to be a 9mm semi-automatic handgun. Les frères qui étaient là, on faisait la shahad. C'est-à-dire, on disait, on disait, là, il est en train de C'est-à-dire, on est, on est prêt à la mort, c'est tout. Six men would die that night. Khaled Balkasimi, Abu Bakr Thabti, Abdel Karim Hassan, Mamadou Tanu Barry, Ibrahima Barry, and Azadine Sufyan. Of all the victims, Sufyan was probably best known among Muslims in Quebec City. He left Morocco for Quebec City when he was just a teenager. He became a fixture in the growing community as owner of the Asalam grocery store. It's named the Arabic word for peace. He had three children. Days after his death, one of his closest friends stepped in to reopen the store to help support Sufyan's family.
Si je dis Sofiane, c'est un ami, c'est un frère, c'est un ange. He was quick with a smile and generous to new arrivals, providing loans, food or jobs. Il a aidé énormément de gens, malgré que lui, il n'aimerait pas que j'en parle. Il a été toujours discret dans son aide. Soufiane's desire to help others would cost him his life. As the killer calmly reloaded his gun during the carnage, one man shouted, he must be stopped. That man was Azadine Soufiane. He nous a dit, il faut venir le rattraper, il faut venir le mettre à terre. We are talking about an, an old man, huh? So, like jumping about 10 to 15 meters to stop the guy from killing his, his brothers. This is, I, I wouldn't do that, but this guy did it. And he, and, and the gunman, he, he returned it back and he just shot him like five bullets in head and everywhere. He's a brave man. He's a hero for us. Twenty-four hours after the mass murder, it seemed like half the city came out in the biting cold to attend a candlelight vigil for the victims. It was a show of solidarity. We're all Quebecers, read one sign. Uh, they are giving us a strong message of support that we are with you. You don't, you cannot imagine how overwhelming it was for all of us. But it wasn't always this way. Over the years, police had been called to the mosque on at least seven different occasions to respond to threats or vandalism. It prompted the mosque to install security cameras. At each attack, we add one to two cameras. Now we have eight. Two weeks ago, we just finalized a plan to, to fortify our mask <laughs> in the front of our mask with uh, two doors. The plan called for a secured door in front and an escape door out back. But those changes come too late for the men in the mosque that night. In a bid to reclaim their religious refuge, the mosque reopened for prayers this Wednesday. It was an act of defiance marked by tears, reflection and unanswered questions. Pourquoi nous Pourquoi moi Et pourquoi encore, je te dirai encore plus. Pourquoi moi, je suis sauvé et l'autre, mon ami proche, et lui est parti Pourquoi l'autre est blessé Non, là, plein de questions. Plein de questions. <laughs> what was it that protected you that night? Why were you not wounded? Why are you still alive, do you think C'est Dieu qui m'a protégé. C'est juste ça. C'est Dieu qui m'a protégé. Ce n'était pas notre heure. Il n'y a pas d'autre mot, il n'y a pas d'autre explication. The biggest unanswered question is why. Why did this have to happen? 17 children lost their fathers in one senseless night of violence. What could motivate somebody to do that? Ignorance and hate. It's simple. He doesn't know these people. They are different, so they are our enemies. We have a responsibility to stop these hate crimes. Everyone, a strong message to all of us that we can live together. 